it's April 14. It's about 9.30 in the morning. We're having a perfectly clear day with good venting. So today we're gonna to go ahead and do the Ponderosa burn in the Lemon Creek watershed. We've been planning that burn for the last three years. So we've done some type one tin from below, lower down in the slope. And uh, for the last year, we've been doing a burn plan that got approved by the province. We're working with BC Wildfire Services today and uh, they will be conducting the burn. We have a clear day with good venting, so we're expecting the smoke to actually go away east, away from the valley. Uh, we're also expecting it to maybe settle at night, but we're hoping that at least 90% of the smoke will have dissipated by then. So it's a good day for it. We have a crew of about 22 guys on the site right now. Uh, they're doing some hand ignition around the boundaries of the burn. And once the hand ignition is completed and we feel comfortable that the site is ready for the aerial ignition, we'll start the aerial ignition. We're expecting that to happen around 2.30 this afternoon. So you can expect today to see a very large plume of smoke. Uh, we are burning a fairly large area. It's about 150 hectares. 20 of those hectares are west facing. They're probably not gonna burn today. We may have to come back to do those later. So probably around 130 hectares of land will burn today. So it's gonna create a lot of smoke. It can look like something intense is happening. But once you zoom in, you're gonna see that it's just a ground fire that is just crawling on the ground and that's consuming all of the fuel accumulation. So it may look scary from a resident's perspective, but really, we expect it to be completely under control and to behave as, as predicted. We're going to start lighting aerially around 2.30. This probably will be done around 5, 6 o'clock. We live in very steep valley, unfortunately, so around 6, 6.30, there's going to be an inversion that happens from the venting, so some of the smoke will drift back into the valley. We should see a little bit of smoke in the valley later on in the day and by the next morning it's going to lift again the next night we may see a tiny bit again will lift again and then in three days it should be completely done so that's what we can expect from the from the fire today my role as a fire weather forecaster for bc wildfire is to provide the zone staff with the information they need around wind speed wind direction temperature relative humidity and venting so that they can make the decision on whether it's appropriate to uh, conduct a prescribed burn. So the process for finding the right day to light a prescribed fire begins months before the day of the event. We will first look at an area uh, and consider how smoke drift will likely uh, evolve both below and above ridgetop elevations and how that smoke drift will behave given different large scale weather patterns. In the smoke management section of the burn plan, we will also outline weather patterns under which we should not light up to avoid um, putting too much smoke into the local airshed. The next way that I can help the zone staff find the right weather window to light up is uh, in the days leading up to the event, all forecast weather, which drives calculations of the fuel moisture. And so then the zone staff can take that and determine whether the fuels are dry enough, but not too dry for them to uh, see that their objectives of the burn are met. On the day of the burn, I will give them a spot forecast for that location, which gives them a heads up on any severe weather events that might be coming over the hill that they may not be aware of so that they can avoid um, lighting up on a day where we have a large wind event or particularly low humidities or when the smoke drift may not be going in the direction that we want it to. So the uh, area that we're burning today is a very rare ecosystem type in the Slocan Valley. They're steep south-facing slope. They're being baked by the sun and um, they're a Ponderosa dominant stand. And for the last hundred years, uh, we've been stopping fires from happening there. So now there's a huge accumulation of fuels. If those areas were to start to burn in August, it would start from a small lightning ignition and within 
a few hours. It could be a landscape size wildfire. It's interesting because it's a similar aspect as the Talbot Creek fire that we had last year. So we had smoke last summer from that fire for a few months. So we're hoping that what we do today is a 24 hour burn and then we may have some lingering smoke for 48 hours. But we have to compare a summer wildfire that burns for months compared to a day or two fire in the spring that just takes care of the ground fuels and doesn't become a landscape sized fire. So that's why we're doing it. We successfully ignited our Ponderosa prescribed burn yesterday. Uh, things went really well. We started off with some uh, black lining just to uh, control the edges and make sure that those were all secure. And once that was done, we went ahead and did some test lighting uh, a little higher up on the slope where we were gonna start right at the very top. Things were looking really good, so we decided to uh, go ahead with the main unit ignition, and it was lit uh, with the helicopter PSD machine, plastic sphere dispenser. And um, we uh, progressively went from the top down towards the bottom, just fine tuning it as we go. And the results are really good. It took most of the afternoon to do, and um, we're wrapped up by the end of the day. What's important for people to understand is that when we do a prescribed burn, they're really low intensity fires. We essentially light the ground fuels and they get consumed very quickly. And then right away within a few weeks, you see the green shoots coming back up. It's not whether this fire is going to happen or not. It will eventually happen. So by carrying out this burn, if there was a lightning strike that hit the area this summer, there either won't be a fire, or if a fire did start, it would be a low intensity one.